since God has graced us with an opportunity to start a new year according to the calendar that we recognize is something to be grateful for. And I want to start this year off by having us to really, really put our focus back on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you study about darkness and find out all of the different and various ways that we've been deceived, it can cause you to be overwhelmed and feel afraid and worried and just all types of excuse me, negative feelings. And that would fit right into the enemy. The enemy wants to be bigger in our hearts and in our lives and minds than what God is. And the enemy is not able to do anything that God doesn't allow him to do. And the Lord has already told us in his word that in the latter days, there's going to be perilous times. There's going to be difficult times. People's heart is going to get cold towards the things of him. And people are going to be calling good evil and evil good and the Lord also said that when he comes back, will he find, he asked a question, will he find faith in the earth? And clearly, the darkness and the things that we see taking place is meant to steal our faith from us. So the fight that God told us to fight was to fight the good fight of faith. So you have to hold on to your faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you have to put yourself in a place where you are hearing the word of God more than you are hearing the other stuff. And you need to take some quiet time and just sit down and let yourself be still and get into the word of God so the Lord can bring comfort and peace and strength to your heart and to your life. And if you're not doing that and then you're looking into darkness, darkness is going to overtake you. I was looking at a documentary and it was showing that in the state of Michigan, at their state house, a group of people who worship Satan actually went to the state house in Michigan and performed a ceremony worshiping and openly exalting Satan as their God. And so you have, uh, and it was on Yahoo where somebody who's a rapper um, was putting videos on the internet showing where the person was sacrificing animals to Satan. So you have people who's openly and blatantly and wholeheartedly committed to darkness and they're conjuring up evil and they're making it more dark than what we've known in the past. So we who are the children of light, we have to be wholeheartedly committed. We can't be lukewarm. We can't be weak. We can't compromise. And most of all, we cannot be afraid of darkness. If you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord, if you believe by faith that you have been saved, then you have to be strong and bold in your commitment and your belief and in your stand in Christ Jesus. Not strong in your own strength or your own power, but strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And if you believe that, then no matter how you feel, no matter what's coming against you, even if you have to cry, if you have to get on your knees, if you have pain and you're bent over or your heart is broken, whatever is going on in your life, the final say is God is stronger than what my feelings feel. Am I making sense to you? So I want to start in the book of James and then I'm going to Psalms. Because if you believe the scriptures, then the scripture might contradict your feelings. Or the scriptures might contradict what's taking place in your life. But if you don't compromise the word of God, and if you don't grow weary, in the end, God will show forth his power and his glory through your situation and your circumstances. But make sure that whatever situation and circumstances you find yourself in, it's not because you've committed sin. James chapter 1. And I want you to remember this. Verse 17. Every good gift comes. Every good and perfect gift is from above. It didn't come from beneath. It's from above. <clears throat> and comes down, not comes up, but comes down from the Father of lights. With whom is no variableness 
neither shadow of turning. There's no darkness. He doesn't change. He doesn't turn. So everything that's good in your life, it comes from God the Father above. Am I making sense to you? So I want now to go to Psalms. I want to encourage you all today. Psalms 37. Actually, let's start at 34. Psalms 34. Remember, David was a man after God's own heart. David was flesh and blood human like us. David literally fought a giant in the natural and cut his head off. People don't want to acknowledge, but giants do, did exist. And there's spiritual things in the, in the spiritual realm that we can't see. So we know that David was a, God, a man after God's own heart. So we can learn what David did, how David felt, what David went through, what David's response to his trials, his testings, and his tribulations with God, or how he still worshiped God and kept his focus on God. So in Psalms 34, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces was not a, were not ashamed. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. So he's, he was going through some troubles. We know at least he fought a big giant. Okay. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste. He's inviting you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, his saints. Talking about the saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Some kind of way, some kind of how. When you put your faith, your trust, your hope in the Lord, the Lord delivers you from the things that's trying to bring fear to you, and he supplies your needs. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they, talking about they that seek See, you got to be doing something. Seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Those good things that comes from the Father of light above. Come, you children, hearken, listen unto me. See, he's saying, listen, come, you children, you saints of the Most High, listen unto me. And I will teach you. The fear of the Lord. Isn't that something you saying? Come, if you listen, I'll teach you how to have fear of God, which means reverence. He don't want you to be afraid, but have reverence for God. What man is he that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? What man is that? He's asking a question. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. That's the man. If you're looking for good, do this. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. By faith you have to believe that. Because we have a better covenant with God than what David had. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. So if you're in trouble, be crying out to the Lord because he'll hear you. The Lord is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart. See, the people with the broken heart 
those are the people who God is the closest to. And he saves such as be of a contrite, a contrite, I'm sorry, heart, spirit. And listen to verse 19, underline verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. If you're righteous, you're going to have a lot of afflictions. But the Lord, he's going to deliver him out of them all. God delivers you out of all those men. And, and I'm somebody right here today. I can testify to that. I can tell you, I've known many afflictions in my life. So much that other people would look at me and say, I can't even be your friend because I don't know how you deal with all of those afflictions. But you see, it says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord God Almighty... See, all of the letters are capitalized. The Lord, God the Father, delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. See, everybody right now is hating the righteous. Don't you worry about that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The Lord redeems. The Lord God Almighty redeems the soul of his servants. So make sure you are a servant of God. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. I want you to look up, look up at chapter 33, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Upon them, underline, upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death. And to keep them alive in famine. Our soul wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Okay, now I want you to turn to Psalms 37. Is this making any sense to you today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have to believe that our God is a good God. And if you love him with everything you have to love him with, put him first. Wake up thinking about him throughout the day. Think about scriptures. Meditate on the word of God. Think about the times he delivered you before. Think about the times when your heart was broken and God bring joy to your heart. Think about the time when you didn't know how you were going to pay your bills, but he made a way for you. Those are the things that you can say, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you helped us to make it into another year. That means you have some kind of purpose or plan for my life and help me Lord not to be deluded or outwitted by evil but focus on you so that I can know what you want to use me for how I can be a blessing to you father and not be caught up in me not be self-centered or selfish or, or mean-spirited or arrogant or critical or condemning and judgmental of other people but Lord how can I bless you and your kingdom how can I be a blessing to those who are lost those who are suffering those who don't know that you exist one of the ways is by how you live by not compromising by not growing weary by being committed and steadfast immovable always abounding in the things of God verse 1 of of Psalms 37 fret not thyself because of evildoers neither be thou envious against the workers <coughs> excuse me of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb trust all through this David is saying let me teach you you got to trust in the Lord and do good always do good don't give, don't pay somebody who do you evil with evil. So shall thou dwell in the land and truly thou shall be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We want God to give us the desires of our hearts without us delighting ourselves in him. You can't get it because all good gifts comes from the father of light. All good and perfect gift. So in order to get the perfect and the, per, the um, good and the perfect gift, we have to be delighting ourselves in the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he, God, shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness, thy righteousness, as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest, 
God wants you to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, for whatever purpose, whatever plan, whatever gifts, whatever blessings he wants to bestow on you, wait on it. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because the man who brings wicked devices to pass. Cease. This year, start off making sure there's no anger in your heart. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any way or wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off. Evil doers going to be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be. But the meek. Stay, stay humble, walk in humility, shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just. We see that clearly in the earth today. And gnash upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. See, your God is so big that those who are plotting evil against the righteous, the Lord shall laugh at him. For he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation or way of life. Make sure the way you live is upright before the Lord. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. The upright inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days. See, David knew about the days of famine. They shall be satisfied, but the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. Make sure you rest in the Lord and in the power of his might. He purchased you with his blood. You are more valuable to him the last time we met than sparrows and the birds in the air. You have value to God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. He paid for you. He purchased you. He redeemed you. He canceled out your sin debt. He made you the righteous. You can't make yourself righteous. Only God can make you righteous. Turn to Hebrews. Am I making sense to you? Make sure you have a... Whatever the relationship you had with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit and Son last year, make sure you start this year diligently seeking the Lord for even a better relationship with Him than you had last year. And press to make sure God has first place in your heart, in your life, and in your family. Hebrews chapter 13. And we had this before, but it's a good scripture to go back and revisit. Verse 5 of chapter 13 says, Let your conversation or your manner of living be without covetousness. Don't covet what somebody else has because that steals your peace. Don't look, the grass is always going to be greener on the other side. <clears throat> and be content with such things as you have. For whatever things you have, God was the one who made it possible. So be grateful for those things. Focus on those things. Take care of those things. And, and be so, so grateful for those things. God knows then he'll be able to trust you with other things because the things don't have you. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Lord says, he'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You can take the Lord at his word. Am I making sense to you? 
Turn to Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and look at the second part of verse 13. It says, Be not weary in well-doing. Be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, put a note on that man, mark that man, and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. See, we don't take these scriptures literally. This is one reason why the church is lukewarm and there's so much sin and no power of God to change people's life. Because you can't change your life. Only the power of God working through the Holy Spirit is able to change a life. But when we don't abide by the word, when it says we shouldn't even have any company with the people who don't abide by these epistles. Do y'all see this in the word of God? I'm going to show you that again. Let's turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. But before you go there, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians. If you're already there, keep your hands there because we are going to go back. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 5. Just to give you another witness of the scripture we just read. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And this is telling the story about the man who committed sin in Corinth. And Paul wrote a letter telling them instructions how to deal with the man who was committing the sin. I'm not going to read that part. I just want to pick up the story at verse 4. Everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 4 says, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. So the, the man was committing sin and the people was not rebuking the man who say he was a Christian for the sin that he was committing. And they, Paul is saying in verse 6, you're glorying in that man. you puffing up and, and acting like that man did something because a young man took his father's wife. That's nothing to be glorying about. Know you not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice. So make sure as we start off this new year, there's no malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Make sure you walk in sincerity. You're not lying and being deceptive, but you're walking in truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Yet not all together with fornicators of the world. So he's not talking about the people of the world who commits fornication and who commits sin. Because if you, well, let's read on. It says, not all together with fornicators of this world or with covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must you needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, idolater, or a railer, or a drunken, or an extortioner, with such and one know not to eat. So he's t not telling you you can't eat with sinners because a sinner needs to be communicating with people of God in order to find out that God exists. But the people who say I'm a Christian 
and live like this. The church is supposed to excommunicate and disconnect yourself from those people. But we haven't practiced this. We allow people who we know are committing sin. That's why the scripture says, know them who you labor among. The enemy has created a model of a church that's not biblical. So that you have hundreds and thousands of people coming together. Nobody knows what the other person is doing. And whatever they do know, they don't address it. They don't talk to the person about it. And sin is leaven. And a little bit of sin in a group of people can cause the whole lump to be leavened or, or sinful. And that, that puts a barrier between you and God. It quenches and grieves the Holy Spirit of God so that the power of God is not able to freely be able to operate. And if you're living a sinful life, you're just deceiving yourself. Because the God is holy, and he didn't save us so that we can continue to practice sin. He saved us out of sin so that we would be holy and righteous and be an example of all of that in the earth. Am I making sense to you? Now let's go back to 1 Peter. Chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, look at verse 19. It says, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God. So according to the will, that's why people don't want to pray, Thy will be done on earth, because people know suffering could be a part of God's will for your life, but that is important. Suffering has value. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. God is a faithful creator. God knows what he's doing. He's in control. He loves you with an everlasting love that cannot be broken. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Turn to Galatians chapter 6. Do you trust him today? Can you rest in him to make sure you have food to eat? Can you trust him in a famine? Or you have to trust yourself and rely on yourself? You know, are you trusting in yourself? Are you trusting in your own power? Those who have a broken heart, the scripture says in Psalm, those are the people who God is near. Those who have a contrite heart, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry I missed the mark. Those are the people who God said he is near. Galatians chapter 6. Look at verse 8. Well, let's start at 7. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For, if that he, for he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not you have as if you got to not faint don't faint don't grow weary and well doing don't be afraid don't get anxious don't be worried but rest in the power of the lord god is our creator and he's faithful he he knows the end from the beginning there's nothing that's happening in your life or in this world that is taking the Lord by surprise. We need to be in Him. You need to be still in Him. Don't always have your TV and your radio and everything going, the games, the computer. But disconnect 
from those things long enough for the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to minister to your spirit, minister to your heart, to strengthen you, encourage you, establish you in the things of Him. You can't do it in your own power, in your own strength, and part-time. You have to be full-time, every day, committed to Christ Jesus and His purposes and His ways. Let's go back to Thessalonians. This time, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Did I take you all there? Chapter 3 of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 3, be not weary and well doing. No, go back there again. Sorry. Chapter 3. Again. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 1 this time. It says, Finally, brethren, pray for us. Let's look at what he's asking to pray for. That the word of the Lord may have free course. He's not praying to get rich. He's not praying for material things. And there's nothing wrong with praying for those things. But if you put your heart on praying for God's word to have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, the Lord makes sure you get the things that you need. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. So there's, there's unreasonable and wicked men that was in the world back then, so you know how much more it is today. These are the things we need to be praying for. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So it's the Lord who establishes you and keeps you from evil. You see that? And we have confidence in the Lord touching you and that you both do and will do the things which we command you in these epistles and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God see this is what we can pray Lord please direct our hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walks disorderly and not after the tradition which we have, which we, which he received of us. Talk about the information and the instructions in these epistles. If we listen to this. Then we would know the power of his resurrection. If you place God in your heart and in your life first. You have to on purpose. You have to be on purpose. Remember I told you diligent means to put forth effort. You have to be forcefully putting forth effort to draw near to God. You have to, on purpose, disconnect yourself from some of the things of this world. And I don't mean for you to live like a hermit. Because you got to be out mingling with people in order to be able for God to use you to affect other people. I'm talking about the people who say they are Christians and they come to church once a year. Or they say they are Christian and the only, day, only time they're living for Christ is the time they with other believers in Christ. They leave out a gathering of believers and they go and smoke and drink and curse and, and commit idolatry and, and fornication and adultery and they do everything that the world is do and they say they are Christian. That brings a bad reflection on Christ. Am I making sense to you? James chapter 4. I'm speaking against these things because we are starting a new year off and people always make new year's resolutions 
But we shouldn't be needing to make New Year's resolutions. We just should need to decide whether or not we're going to live for Christ or not. Because if we're going to live for Christ and we're not a hearer of his word, but we do what his words say to do, we'll have success. The things that we have need of, God says, I already know what things you have need of before you even ask me. I created you. So if I created you, I know what my creation needs. And if we'll be happy with what God provides for us, the quality of our life would be different. We would be in peace. We wouldn't be sad. We wouldn't be stressed. We wouldn't be worried. We'd be able to trust God. But we first have to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. If we are doing and conforming to his ways and not according to the things of this world. You cannot have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. You can't be compromising the word of God and then think that you are right with God. Because the Lord tells us to abstain all appearance of evil. If we doing things that make us look like we committing sin, then how can we bring glory and honor to God? Because you don't know who God might be wanting to use you, who he might be saying, look at my servant, whoever. Look at my servant. At any point, if you're committing sin, you cancel out God's ability from saying that about you. Because you name the name Christ, the people who know you name the name Christ, the unsaved people that you commit sin with, you causing their lives to be in the balance. Because they're looking at you who say you are a Christian as an example of what being a Christian is. So if you drinking, if you smoking, if you fornicating, if you partying, then you tell that person, I could be a Christian and continue to do these things. That person's life is hanging in the balance. And your own life is hanging in the balance because you are self-deceived. Because if you are a Christian, you are regulating your heart and your life based on these scriptures. And that's what the, that's what the scripture is saying. If this person who say they are a Christian is not regulating their life by these epistles, separate yourself from that person. So I'm today encouraging you to examine your own selves before God. As we 